Hello there. Thanks for joining me. This is uh, Tony, and I'm uh, I'm out here uh, uh, trying to live the coolest life because that's the name of this this uh, YouTube channel. So I guess I got to do that. But uh, today I'm going to do an RV inspection. Uh, this is actually a new RV. Now, why in the world would you want to get an inspection on an RV, and particularly a new RV? I'm about to tell you why. I'm about to show you some of the things I look at whenever uh, I do an inspection and what you should be concerned about when doing an inspection or trying to get one inspected because I'm just out here living the coolest life. Well, some of the great things about being an inspector is the fact that you get to travel a little bit. As you can see outside, it's a really nice day. It's a little early for me. It's about just after eight o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm not used to quite being out of bed by this time because as an RV inspector you kind of make your own hours but uh, uh, anyway I am and uh, on the road and told someone if I do it if I do it in the in the summer especially uh, here in Georgia or Alabama or Florida uh, I try to do start it at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is pretty good time it gives everyone a chance to uh, you know get moving and, and everything but it also uh, make sure that it's not very hot outside just yet because when I get on site I'm going to start as with the outside in fact I, I normally tell people as I as I walk into an RV inspection that uh, I'm gonna be outside for my first two hours you see a good RV inspection is going to take about four hours uh, if you're real familiar with the RV already because there's so many differences in RVs from from uh, travel trailers and the, the motorized and uh, you know the, the fifth wheels and you know all those big giant motorhomes there's so many differences and where the light switches are how do you flush the toilet I mean there's so many different things but uh, unless you're really if you're really familiar with one already uh, a particular one already then you can probably speed up the inspection now why in the world would someone want to get one inspection inspected consider this would you buy a new home without an inspection huh? probably not as a matter of fact if you get a loan on a home, the loan company is going to require an inspection. Now, what I'm thinking is, why in the world wouldn't a, uh, a loan company that's going to be loaning money on an RV not require an inspection? I don't know. I don't know. It's like they just trust the dealership or whoever's selling the, the item, you know, that, 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 uh, that it's going to be okay. I will say this about dealerships since I mentioned that dealerships are great to deal with because you can always you know if something breaks down you go back and get it get it fixed because I've got a warranty right okay so you got a warranty all right what happens if you uh, say you live in Jacksonville Florida and you bought one in Nashville Tennessee well here's what happens uh, you go pick it up in Nashville you bring it home two weeks later you find out the refrigerator's not working and yes that happens at brand new ones too. In fact, I was uh, I did one uh, about three months ago, and that's exactly what happened. They had a uh, they had a uh, what, what we call a residential fridge. Residential fridge wouldn't wouldn't get cold. As an inspector, I check that. I don't just stick my hand in there. I put a thermometer in there, and I put a thermometer in the freezer, and I make sure it's cool to temperature. Basically, basically working the specs. So yes, yes, you need to need to be concerned with that. So what happens if it breaks down? I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Well, you know that 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 service department will warranty that. You just bring it back to Nashville. Yep, yep. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh, sure. You can take it to an authorized dealership. Yeah, okay. If you didn't buy it from them, yeah, you go to the back of the line in most cases when it comes to service. Not every place. Don't get me wrong. There are some that will put you in line with everybody else, but most, and I do mean most. Most will say, oh, yeah, you didn't buy that from us? Uh, yeah, we'll have to get to that uh, house uh, two and a half months from today. Yeah, yeah, that could be concerning. This is not, you're not dealing with a dealership like you would deal with cars. You deal with cars, you go in there, and, uh, and any Audi dealership is going to service an Audi no matter where you bought it from. Uh, General Motors, you know, Ford, Toyota, Honda, all those are going to service it no matter where you bought it from. That's how dealerships work. It's not really that way with RVs. It just isn't. <laughs> it just isn't. Ask around 
uh, talk to some RVers who are who are doing it, and they'll tell you the same thing. It's it's just not that way. Now, will they get you in and work with you? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, eventually. But it's not like a car. So why wouldn't you get in, get it inspected, especially in an RV when you're going to pay thirty thousand dollars for one, or sixty, or a hundred and thirty, or two hundred and thirty? So wait a minute, you're going to spend two hundred thousand dollars on an RV and not get it inspected? Well, my granddaddy used to tell me, son, that just don't make no walk around sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's right. That doesn't make no walk around sense at all. You should definitely get that thing inspected. So let's take a look at some of the things that I'm gonna be checking out on this RV. Well, that didn't work out like I thought it would. <laughs> so here's a great reason to get an, inspected, get an inspection for an RV. Uh, so I get there and uh, at the dealership and this one came in as brand new and they said uh, we did the DPI which is what they call dealer prep inspection uh, but uh, there, there was a little issue with it I'm like oh really well the the owner wanted these uh, toppers to go over top of their slides and they're not installed yet and also they also uh, ordered uh, a washer and dryer and well we haven't exactly got it installed yet so it's not hooked up but, uh, so I contacted the owner, and the owner's like, yeah, don't worry about that, that's aftermarket, whatever. He says, I wanna make sure everything else is working. All that warranty stuff, and not that other stuff isn't warranty, but anyway. So I said, uh, all right, what else can I do? I said, let's get moved around here. So I go outside and I'm waiting. I've talked to one one of the service techs, and we're waiting, and the other one comes around, one of the service managers walks around. Um, you know that RV that you're here to inspect? It's not quite ready. And I wish they would've told us you were coming. I said, hold up, <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I spoke with the owner yesterday. The owner said that he specifically talked to your salespeople. Now, I don't know about your salespeople and your service department's conversations. I said, uh, and told them that we wanted to get inspected this week. He says, oh yeah, come on out Tuesday and get it done. It'll definitely be ready by then. We're doing our, we're doing our DPI inspection on Monday. So by Tuesday, it'll be good. What you don't understand is when you when you get something, a, a dealer prep inspection or any kind of inspection, if you find something, it needs to be fixed, right? Right? Right. So it needs to be fixed. So in order to fix it, you then have to take it back to the service guys and have them fix it as quickly as possible, provided you have the parts for it. So lots can happen. So you never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never want to pick up an RV, especially a brand new one, the day after it was dealer prepped. Or should I say, don't schedule it for that. Give them a couple of days. In fact, they said, well, we're going to finish up today. It'll be ready tomorrow morning. I said, no, I'm not coming back tomorrow morning. And then I'll say you don't have a part or something. I said, I'll be back on Thursday. I will call you tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I will call you tomorrow. And uh, just to make sure everything's good tomorrow late afternoon, maybe four o'clock or so, make sure we're still on. I said, that way whenever I get here at nine o'clock on, on Thursday morning, it's ready to go. So keep that in mind. This particular one had a, uh, they found that it had a, uh, a slide issue. They're like, oh, this happens a lot, it's pretty common. But they should have told the owner that, that it's pretty common. And they should have told the owner that they were gonna have to fix it. And they should have told the owner that it was gonna take an extra day, or should I say, the customer. Uh, that's just part of customer service. Keep them as keep them as far as much as possible. These people have already basically bought and paid for this thing and just haven't picked it up yet. And it's brand new, it's brand new. So, so that's the situation you need to be aware of. Those things can happen. They do happen, and they will happen pretty frequently. Uh, but on the good note, it's a nice day for a drive. I'm going to drive back out there on uh, on uh, Thursday. And I've also scheduled to go see a Masonic Lodge there called uh, uh, Fort Valley. We'll stop in Fort Valley and go to one of their meetings. I think it's Fort Valley. Uh, anyway, I don't know if it's Fort Valley. Maybe one of the other ones uh, there in Byron. But I'm going to stop and go to their uh, go to their lodge meeting. And I'll be posting a video of that meeting and uh, the uh, what not the meeting itself, but uh, of their of their building and what they have and, uh, Masonically. So you can take a look at it. Make, basically, get a good tour of that lodge. But I'm going to close out this video, and I'm going to try to do another video like this one here of the actual inspection on Thursday. I should probably get it up by Sunday, I guess. But uh, 
But right now, that's all I got for you today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Send this to your friends who might be considering being an RV inspector, or maybe they're already an RV inspector, and they could they could probably relate and comment uh, about the things that go on when you're an inspected RV and, and what to what to expect when you're not expecting a bad thing to happen. Uh, things can't happen, but you definitely want to give it time. Just delay it a few more days. Uh, if you've been waiting a long time to get an RV, another week's not going to make that big of a difference. Put that cushion in there because the last thing you want to do is you buy an RV and you get it home and you don't do nothing with it for a month and then all of a sudden you take it out for the weekend and something doesn't work. Not to say it can't happen even after an inspection, but it's going to greatly increase your chances of everything running like it's supposed to run if you get that thing inspected and get it fixed before it leaves their lot. Well, I'm Tony, so you don't take care, and we will see you in the next video because I'm just out here living the coolest life. <laughs>